Okay, so in the first video we used a hash, and a hash will be important uh, moving forward, but I think the next most important piece... Okay, so let's bring it in. So let's just look at these uh, uh, inputs and outputs. But basically, um, the most important piece of a key pair is the private key, and let's just go ahead and generate one of those and see what it looks like. There we go. Okay, so, and I can just click, 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 and generate a, it's basically a random, uh, I'm guessing it's the same size, 64, I bet it's the same size as our hash that we were just doing. Yep, okay, so it's a random 64 character hex hexadecimal string. So you start with that as your private key, and then using, uh, this would be a side quest, check it out on Wikipedia, uh, elliptic curve cryptography, we will derive a public key. So now we've got a private key and a public key. We've just generated a, a, a private key out of the blue, whatever we want. We can just keep clicking this and get another random one and another one, not random one. Okay, then this gives us an address. This is where people could actually send money, right? So so this is this is sort of like when, when someone says send, send to my Ethereum address, that's what this guy is right here. And a lot of times let's actually even display it as an address with a little blocky. There we go. Isn't that nice? So uh, if I wanted to create an account in Wells Fargo, I would have to drive down to the bank and give them a bunch of information and it would uh, be a headache and then it would take a while to generate uh, an account within a cryptographic system like this where I can send and receive money. I just generate this private key. This private key is everything. This 64 character hexadecimal basically uh, derives everything else. And, and so there's a really neat property about this key pair that uh, we should explore, and that is um, signing and recovering messages. So let's see how that works. So basically what you do is you take your private key and you uh, use it to sign some kind of message. Okay, so let's, uh, let me just get a text box here and type, what, what should our message be? Something, uh, the bear is icky with honey. Okay, cool. So then we plug that in as our message. Okay. And I think it's just set to auto sign. I could have a button here that would sign, but instead I'm just going to have an auto sign so it's quicker. Uh, and this will give us back a signature. Okay. So if this changes, see how kind of like the hash, right? Our, our signature is basically taking the message and our private key and we're signing something. And so what we get out of that is a signature. Now, I can send this out to the world. I could send this publicly to everyone, this, this string here along with the message. And what the world can do, what anybody can do with math is verify that I particularly, I'm the guy who signed it. And let me show you how we do that. What we do is we use a uh, recover method. So we put we plug our, uh, actually let's let's do this completely separate because it'll look cooler. So we need a couple text boxes. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, we've got a couple text boxes, one for the signature and one for the message. Oops, kind of got those backwards, crossed streams. Okay, here we go. So we need to plug in first our message, the bear is sticky with honey, okay. And then we'll plug in our signature. Okay, there we go. Now, what comes out of that is the address that was used to sign it. Whoa, what's going on here? Uh, there we go, <laughs> we had a little space there. Okay, look at that, 32A9. And just to, we'll use Alex Van de Zandt's uh, blockies to visually, we can visually see that that account signed that message and there's no way if any if, if anybody's like well let's maybe it's a badger look at that everything changes even with that same signature the message it does spit out an address but it doesn't spit out the correct address so so this this message here can't be tampered with we could we could throw a timestamp in there if we wanted to right we could say uh on this day i predict that something will happen and sign it and put out the put out the signature and put out the message and anyone from for the rest of the time with math can just prove that you did sign that message at that time. 
So, so this is this is the key property of a key pair here. A key pair generated from nothing more than this 64 character hexadecimal random random string can can be used to sign a message, and then that message can be recovered. So message plus key pair equals signature, signature plus message equals public address, right? Or public key. So private key, message, signature, message, public key. Does that make sense? Okay, that's, that's basically the, the key piece here is that we can sign data with our private key and people can prove that it was us that signed it. And that'll be uh, a, an important piece for the next step. Awesome.